Peter's bedwetting journey began at a young age, and it seemed to follow him like a pesky shadow as he grew up. From the moment he transitioned from diapers to regular underwear, his nights became a constant battle against embarrassment and frustration. At least one or two nights during the week, when he woke up, Peter would discover he had soaked his bed yet again. Frantically, he stripped his sheets, praying his mother, Pam, wouldn't notice. But of course, Pam had an uncanny ability to detect such mishaps, as by now she was used to it. She entered his room with a sympathetic smile, her voice gentle as she reassured him all was okay. Peter had been invited to spend the night at his friend Jason's house. Excitement mixed with anxiety coursed through him as he packed his overnight bag, hoping desperately to avoid any bedwetting mishaps. Determined to keep his secret hidden, he lay awake throughout the night, too afraid to fall asleep. Exhaustion finally caught up with Peter, and he drifted off into a restless slumber. Morning sunlight streamed through the curtains, rousing him from his sleep. As he opened his eyes, dread washed over him and his heart sank at the familiar sensation of dampness. He frantically looked down, only to discover a wet puddle on the sheets beneath him. Panic seized him, and his mind raced for a quick explanation to divert attention from his bedwetting. In a moment of desperation, Peter glanced at Jason's small dog, Buddy, curled up at the foot of Jason's bed. Thinking on his feet, he grabbed Buddy and exclaimed, Oh no! Look at what your dog did! Confusion clouded Jason's face as he looked at Buddy, who appeared innocent and unfazed by the commotion. Jason's mother, drawn by the commotion, entered the room, a questioning expression on her face. Peter, beads of sweat forming on his forehead, continued his charade. Buddy must have had an accident during the night. Jason's mother's eyes narrowed, and a hint of understanding flickered across her face. It was obvious to her that Peter had wet his bed, but she chose not to confront him about it directly. Instead, she played along, trying to diffuse the awkwardness. With a gentle smile, she said, Oh, naughty buddy, we'll clean it up. Don't worry, Peter. Deep down, Peter felt a mix of relief and shame. Relief that his secret remained intact for the moment, thinking to himself that this would be the last time for sleepovers. He knew it was only a matter of time before the truth would be revealed. But for now, he clung to the thin veil of deception that protected him from further embarrassment. Through his many mishaps, he was comforted by his sister Sharon, who was such a caring and loving sister. But his other sister Gina would always make fun of him. His father would get very frustrated, and his mother Pam, forever understanding and worried, tried to take him to the doctor and specialist to get answers, only to find out that no one knew how to stop it. In high school, Peter's aspirations led him to participate in the annual talent show. He had been practicing his guitar skills for months, determined to prove that his bedwetting struggles did not define him. With newfound confidence, he took to the stage, his heart pounding in his chest. As he strummed the first chords, his nerves settled and he began to sing. The audience listened intently, drawn in by his heartfelt performance. But just as he reached the climax of the song, a sudden surge of anxiety triggered an unfortunate accident. Peter's face reddened, tears of mortification welled up in his eyes and a hushed silence fell over the crowd. His friends who were present in the audience were taken aback by the unexpected turn of events. Some gasped, others tried to stifle their laughter, unable to contain the amusement. Peter's shoulders slumped, feeling the weight of humiliation descends upon him like a curtain falling on his dreams. It was a painful reminder that his bedwetting struggles continued infiltrating even the most important moments of his life. Throughout most of his childhood and adolescence years, he was bullied as being the bedwetter kid. His life was miserable, especially after the talent quest. As an adult, Peter's struggle with bedwetting persisted, continuing to cast a dark shadow over his life. The weight of anxiety and stress seemed to trigger his nocturnal accidents and occasional daytime leaks, leaving him in a constant state of apprehension. In an attempt to manage his condition, he relied on incontinence pads, silently enduring the discomfort and embarrassment they brought. The knot in Peter's stomach seemed ever-present, a constant reminder of the limitations his bedwetting imposed on his life. It felt like an insurmountable barrier preventing him from pursuing romantic relationships. The fear of rejection and the prospect of exposing his deepest secret to someone he cared about loomed over him like a dark cloud. However, fate had a different plan in store for Peter. One day, a woman named Tracy, a colleague from work, 
approached him with a twinkle in her eyes and a warm smile on her lips. If you're not going to ask me out, then I'll ask you, she said boldly, catching Peter off guard. His heart raced, and a mixture of excitement and terror coursed through his veins. Reluctantly, Peter agreed to go on a few dates with Tracy. With each encounter, their connection deepened, and it became clear that there was something special between them. Tracy's understanding and genuine interest in Peter gave him a glimmer of hope, but the burden of his secret still weighed heavily on his shoulders. Finally, one evening, as they shared a heartfelt conversation, Tracy looked into Peter's eyes and asked, Do you like me? His heart skipped a beat, torn between the fear of rejection and the desire for honesty. Summoning every ounce of courage, Peter took a deep breath and revealed his lifelong struggle with bedwetting. He expected the worst, anticipating a look of disgust or disbelief to cross Tracy's face. However, to his astonishment, she remained calm and compassionate. With a reassuring smile, she shared that she had a close friend who was a hypnotherapist specializing in helping people overcome various challenges in their lives. Though skeptical, Peter recognized the genuine care and support in Tracy's eyes. He realized that he had nothing to lose and everything to gain. With a newfound determination, he decided to give hypnotherapy a chance, hoping that it would provide the breakthrough he had been longing for. Over the course of several sessions, Peter delved into the depths of his subconscious, allowing the hypnotist to guide him toward a resolution. The hypnotic suggestions planted seeds of confidence, calmness, and control within his mind. With each session, the grip of anxiety weakened, creating a sense of freedom and liberation. Miraculously, the bedwetting that had plagued Peter for most of his life ceased completely. It was as if a weight had been lifted off his shoulders and a new chapter in his life began. The relationship with Tracy blossomed and their connection deepened even further, solidifying the bond that had formed between them. Peter often marveled at the serendipity of their meeting. He believed that it was meant to be, that their paths had crossed to lead him toward a solution he had never thought possible. With gratitude in his heart, his hopes for a brighter tomorrow and finding love, he was finally on cloud nine. Please like and subscribe. And here on the end screen is a story about a mother who taught her daughter to shoplift to help pay for her own addictions. And when her daughter was caught shoplifting, she blamed her. I really feel sorry for her daughter. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.